Welcome back to those who've been hanging with me some time and welcome to those of you who are new to my channel. I'm Adele Levine, Intuitive and Medium. All right, so I got a great question when I did an Instagram Live and I'm gonna give this credit to my cat who's gonna suddenly make a lot of noise. No, I'm gonna give credit to, you know you are Lancel on Instagram Live. Um, and they, he had asked me advice for people who are of the age you know, the younger Z generation, and may this may even help the generation after them, which is the alpha generation, because they're the tween, maybe, maybe not. But it this he wanted to know, like, what can magic, spirituality, how can it help the generation, the younger generation? And so I thought, since I'm always such an advocate for the generation behind me, and speaking as a gen, <clears throat> Uh, excuse me, um, Xer. <laughs> I don't know why that's a problem to say, but I'm a Gen Xer here. Um, I always was supportive of every generation behind me. I definitely, you know, believe in working and helping those who are coming up behind, definitely learning from those who are in front, but it is our duty. It is my pleasure to want to help the generation behind me because listen, you guys, listen, Get a little closer. I can't do this for that long. So there needs to be some of you who are carrying on bringing the open-mindedness and the evolvement of people. Not that I'm the only one doing it, but I want to see other people out there reading. If you don't want to read, then finding ways that you can, can expand your mind, other people's mind and such. So this is what I would like to say to you first, you know, Mm -hmm. a little sip now to quote Lancel this is his quote that I thought was awesome and <laughs> I hope he sees this video um, old generation struggle with phones as I'm holding my phones new generation struggle with remotes I liked it it totally makes sense. It is the concept of something that is definitely goes back. Remote controls have been being used like even in the early eighties when there were these big block, can we get a picture of old eighties remote control? And you know, iPhones and such, you can't say that. I mean, yes, you can say the cell phone was around in the nineties, but you cannot say like it was that, you know, it goes way back. So it just shows the generation gap. And having to me understanding that the generation behind me, not only have you guys gone through quite a bit of a time when it comes to what's going on with the world, but you also have been through quite a bit of time just, you know, trying to, to you know, create a closure in the gap. Now, I just wanted to quickly make some quick announcements. One, for those who are the Witch and the Medium fans, we are back, so we have episodes up. Go check us out on YouTube. Go check us out on where you listen to podcasts. We will be posting another podcast. If you're not familiar, that's my podcast, The Witch and the Medium, that I co-host with Mystic Dylan. I'm also doing a class on how to um, practice and develop your mediumship skills. So some of the little stuff I'm telling you here, you can actually learn within the class as well. And I've been teaching how to practice and develop um, psychic skills. And we're going to be on class three. The cool thing about this is that in Zoom, I can pair you guys up and you are practicing reading on each other. I'm giving 25% off for the holidays off of all my readings and gift certificate. But if you use a gift certificate, don't put it in the redeem bar. Make sure you put it at the end of purchase the code it's a little different all right so what i want to say to the generation is this when you're using magic or spirituality if you are at school or if you are out in the world and people are bothering you it doesn't work on cats if you can hear my cats starting to you know join in but if you are out in the world and i've even done this today and you feel like someone, you know, in your sphere is creating like an uncomfortableness. Like I know there's a lot of anxiety and there's a lot of like uncomfortableness and there's a lot I know um, people feel like when they're amongst others, when they're in crowds, when you're in, in a, um, 
when you have to talk to someone that you don't know, because I understand this. I know that older generations don't understand why the younger generation has this anxiety and leave in the comments below, leave in the comments below if you know what I'm talking about and you feel this. But I, you know, if you suffer from this kind of anxiety, but I understand that you live in a digital time, everything's text, everything's online, everything isn't, isn't like face to face communication. It's understandable because, you know, some of us grew up where we were trained how to answer the phone. Hello, this is so-and-so residence and hello, my mother is, can't get to the phone right now and life or our parents or raise a hand if you remember that. Um, and things like that. Um, and so we were kind of trained to be, you know, this way. So it's not crazy to me because as somebody who's gotten very used to, like if someone calls me, which happened to me, like, why are you calling me? It, and you're not used to it, I can understand this anxiety. So therefore in a world that's gone through a pandemic, that's gone through all this crazy change and everything that's moving, and you're like, I feel this anxiety about, about being around people, it's understandable. So when you're around people in a group and you kind of want to keep people away, number one, do not think, go away, go away, go away, because you're pushing an energy out that is making them go, did you say you wanted to get closer to me? And that is what's, that's what's going to happen. So if you ever notice, if you if you're in a location and you see someone that you don't want to deal with, someone who you know bothers you, and you just hope they go away, and you're thinking that, and they come right to you, that is why. So you have to look at energy. Number two is to look at energy as like petals to a flower. So you either have your petals like this, where I call this half open. You have them completely open and that's if you want to get in front of a group and you need to get a presentation or something or you cloak and some people cloak and I've talked about this before, but you can practice these different ways when you are in public. So if you just pull your energy in, you're not sending a signal to them. If you half, you know, open your energy, you're sending a little bit of a signal. And if you are cloaking, which is pulling all your energy in, like pulling it in. And this is something I'm going to teach in the, um, in my classes, uh, my courses, because I'm doing four week courses. And that's why I'm excited about it because I can expand, but pulling all your energy in is a way that you cloak. Cloaking is real. I know you've seen it on Harry Potter, but it is based on the idea of how to manipulate energy, manipulate energy. Can we put up manipulate energy? Because that's what we're talking about. So let's say you just really are like, don't look over here. Meaning like this person not only is causing you problems, giving you like, let me rewind that. Not only do you not want to deal with them, maybe they are someone that, you know, is not your cup of tea. There's no tea in here. Um, <laughs> not only that, sorry, just, just water, but not only if they're not your cup of tea or something like this, but if they are someone that really, really irritates you, meaning like they are like not nice to you. They're not kind to you. They're, they're giving you trouble. Then you blow yourself up like a blowfish and you see spikes coming off of you. That's what you visualize spikes. Now I know people do the golden light and I even teach about gold light of protection, but this is like, this is like putting this energy around you and then putting spikes. Now, let me give you example of your like Adela. Does this really work? How do I know? I used to do this all the time, way back when I first started reading. And I was kind of the same way. Like, I'm not sure I know what I feel, but I got a confirmation one day. One day I saw someone walk in where I used to read my first place I ever read at. And I could tell her energy was very negative and there was just like a negativity to it. So I did exactly what I described. And she literally walked up to me because I didn't realize it and said, why did you put all those colors around me? Do you not like me? She could see them. Mm -hmm. She had a gift. Now her negativity wasn't like bad. She just kind of didn't know how to control her gifts. So she was kind of, you know, not doing the 
half mat, you know, the half opening cloak. She didn't know how to do all the protection things. So she was kind of having this energy around her that it just didn't feel good. But it was my first time where I said, okay, she can see that, that's pretty cool. And it made me trust what I was doing. And that may happen to you. When you put, meaning there may be someone who actually sees it, but usually what happens, and when I used to teach this in my classes before, and people will come back and report to me, usually what happens is people just somehow kind of move away. They just cannot, they don't feel like being near you. They just can feel uncomfortable. And that's what you want, right? Don't sit next to me here. Don't come over here. And that's what you can do. Now, lastly, if someone is really, really kind of coming off, like this person is just not any good. I just don't like, you know, what they're putting off or who they are. And almost like even can be hurtful. You can visualize spikes, like you're throwing little, like, I would say like almost like porcupine, you know, quills at them. That's what I mean by spikes. You're just throw, you just kind of visualize like not only are you putting them around you, but you're throwing it at them and that works as well. And if you look up in magic with the K, if you look up magic, you will see that people use railroad spikes to put and bury like in around their house and it is a form of protection. So this is what I would say to you, to those of you who are young, this is how you can help yourself. But lastly, remember this, be true to who you are. Be true to who you are. Don't worry about people liking you because when you're worried about people liking you, you're putting off an energy of like, like me, like me, like me. I hope you like me. And it makes people kind of almost purposely not want to give you what you want. It turns people the other direction. But if you are being true to yourself and you always go for the grounding, keeping your feet on the ground, meaning don't keep your head in the clouds, have a balance as above, as below, and you keep yourself grounded and trust that you know who you are because you do, you were born with this knowing, then people feel a different kind of energy from you. It's like, I don't need you. I want you to respect me. I don't need you to like me because I am cool and knowing who I am. Now, I know that's hard when you're young, the knowing who you are, but I believe you can. It's just you're not taught and you're not told to trust it. So I hope that helped. And please let me know if there's anything else that I could do in this arena. I'm going to be posting on my Patreon. In my Patreon, I'm going to continue this, but it's going to be about teenagers who may feel like they have a gift and they don't know how to do it. So it's for the parents to help their kids or nieces or nephews and such, and maybe learn like how to protect and hone psychic abilities. So catch me over there if you're on my Patreon. Thank you so much. Follow yourself, follow no one, listen to your inner voice always. See you soon.